Welcome back. In this session, we are going to look at test plan. Before we write our first line of code, what we need to do is we need to go over our specification. This might be either the design specification or the architecture specification, or it might be a standard document. Let us say we went through some standard, then we went through an architecture spec and a design spec. And after going through all these three, what we need to come up with is a test plan. And only after we have our test plan ready, are we really in a position to start writing our test cases or developing our environment. Let us go ahead and see what a test plan is. When we speak of a test plan or a verification plan, there are multiple components to it. So the first component is logistic. When we speak of logistic, we are basically speaking of what is it that we require in order to even get started. We might require a special kind of machine. We might want access to a regression form for running our regressions. We need to specify what our bug tracking system is. If there is any cloud-based infrastructure required, we need to specify that. We need to specify what softwares are required, what licenses we need to acquire and so on and so forth. This logistic part is more on getting everything ready for starting our verification process. Next, we will define what kind of environment we are going to develop for our verification. We have different kind of environment like unit level, subsystem level, chip level, multi-chip level. And then for building all this environment, we require different kind of components. We require different drivers, bus functional models, monitors, generators, then we will write different kind of assertions and checkers. We need to specify all of those. And once this is done, we need to plan out each of our test case and map it to the environment in which it is going to run. And then for each environment, we need to define the goals as to what is the code coverage and functional coverage goal we are planning for each module in that environment. And once all this is ready, we will come up with a schedule where we speak of resource allocation, their assignment, and the due date by which different part of verification will be completed or different resources will be acquired. And we try to predict some sort of an end date for our verification process. Let's move on and see what our design specification was. We are implementing a two input OR gate with a simple ready enable protocol. And we have said that our producers and consumers can take somewhere between 0 to 20 cycles for either generating data or consuming data. What it means is that a producer at some point of time might generate data back to back, which is a zero cycle delay. If it is facing some kind of bottleneck issue, then it might take up to 20 cycles to generate the next unit of data. We will typically have somewhere between 0 to 20 as our limits for the delay. We don't expect it to go beyond 20. Now, for our particular test plan, what we require is a machine, one laptop or a PC. Then we are storing all our code on GitHub. That is our code repository. For regression, we are using GitHub Actions. For issue tracking, we have GitHub issues. The software requirement is we require a version of Python which is greater than 3.6. We require Icarus Verilog. For code coverage, we require one of the commercial simulators. And then we require CocoTB, CocoTB Burst, and CocoTB Coverage as part of our software toolkit. On the licenses side, we are not using any PFM, so there is no PFM license. But there is a simulator license for code coverage. This would come as a part of our logistics. And then we define what are the different environments we have in our design. Let's take the case of our OR gate. This would count as a unit level verification environment. Now you might have a chip which has, say, a machine unit, which then feeds data to an encryption unit, which then feeds data to say Ethernet IP and then it goes out on Ethernet. 
then it comes back you have decryption decompression and this might be an independent module which you have defined in your design and you might want to test the interaction between each one of these modules that would be your subsystem level environment and then you have your chip where you have your processor subsystem then you have your transport subsystem which is what we defined up over here then you might have your memory subsystem and maybe a number of other components maybe some ai ml system at this chip level what you would have is you might have a subsystem level environment for each one of this and then you might have a final chip level top environment and in some cases you might want to see how whether the processor can talk to another similar processor so you might create a wrapper or two such instances connected to each other and try to do some kind of a back-to-back multi-chip or a multi-unit or a multi-subsystem environment just for verification purpose all this goes as a part of your environment definition in our case we had a unit level environment which is our tut which has two inputs a and b one output y now we have a generator for a generator for b which is generating the data then we have a driver for a and a driver for b we have a driver for y then we have a scoreboard now let us say that for the scoreboard instead of sending data from the driver add a separate monitor over here and i am sending data from this monitor to the scoreboard and right now what we are doing is we are sending data from this generator to the scoreboard this would form my verification environment at the unit level this is my unit level verification environment for this dut other than this if i am writing any kind of assertions or if i am writing any kind of coverage that too would be specified as a part of my environment plan once this is in place the next thing is to start defining the test cases that i will run on this particular environment i will start defining my test cases i have here test case one my feature is that this is an or get data path test then a description the description says that q inputs to a and b pin and check whether expected value matches the output of dot this is a directed to triple based test case we are given the unit test environment and what we are going to do is we are going to iterate over this set of inputs this is my input value and this is my expected output and with this i will define my coverage saying that a equals to 0 1 b equals to 0 1 y can take value 0 1 and then i might have some protocol coverage and then i want to cross between a and b this entire thing will go as a coverage group in my test specification let us say i call this cg1 and here coverage i might say that i am meeting this particular coverage group a given test can cover multiple or hit multiple coverage groups if the test is intended to hit a particular coverage group or a particular case in my coverage which was not being hit by other test cases then we will specify that over here in the coverage section now similarly let us say i have another test case tc2 where data is being randomized similar description random inputs to a b check whether expected value matches output scenario is random test given the unit test environment input a is 10 samples so selected randomly between 0 and 1 b is 10 samples selected randomly between 0 and 1 then output is a or b this is my expected output 
Okay, and then again, the same coverage what we defined previously, we will also define for TC2. We will say that this is coverage is CG1. And at this unit level environment, my goal is to get 100% code coverage, 100% branch coverage, and 100% toggle coverage. And similarly, I will be targeting 100% functional coverage. Now, what typically happens is let us take the case of our, uh, say, encryption unit. At the unit level, when we are testing this encryption unit, we'll attempt to get 100% coverage on this. But now when this encryption unit is a part of a subsystem, let us say I have got compression, encryption followed by Ethernet. When I'm doing this, I don't really need to again retarget 100% functional coverage on this. What I will be targeting is just at the boundary level, whatever IO signals are there, whether those IO signals are toggling, whether I have, for example, if there is a configuration unit and that is being, let us say, connected to AHB, whether that configuration unit is being accessed, whether I'm able to access the least possible address and the max possible address in this configuration space and whether this is properly connected to this which means all the data pins here are toggling all the output data pins here are toggling that is all that i would care when i'm doing a subsystem level verification for something which is internal to my system target 100 percent code branch and toggle coverage i would just target toggle coverage on the io and i might target 100 percent code coverage at this top level wrapper code Next, what we do is once we have defined all our test cases and the coverage goal for the test cases, we start planning who is going to write which test case, what environment that test case is going to run on, when that process is going to start, when that process is going to end. And on a regular basis, we are going to keep track of whether that work has happened or not. What I would have is a test schedule document which would typically be some kind of a spreadsheet where all this is recorded as my plan of action and at a regular reporting interval which might be weekly monthly or quarterly depending on how big the project is i might keep updating the status of each activity over here as to whether it is done whether something is pending and so on the other component in my verification plan is a list of all my bins and coverage in this case i am saying that my bins are a b and y with cross of a and b then i am defining that i have these three states on my protocol interface idle ready and transaction and if you look at our protocol we have these three phases and we could transition from here to here here to here and here to here we also could transition directly over here and we also have a path from here to here one of our verification goal is to ensure that we cover each one of these transitions we also have a path from here to here These are the various transitions which are possible and as a part of our verification process we need to ensure that we are hitting each one of these paths <coughs> so the way we define this is we define in this particular case we define a previous state value and the current state value and we ensure that we have a cross between current and previous state and the final thing is that we specified that we have a delay between 0 to 20 at producers and consumers. We will have a pin to check whether we are hitting all the delay corners in our test case. With this, we have completed the definition of our test plan. Next item is to go ahead and start executing on this test plan. There are some components of this test plan which we have already implemented. 
we implemented the driver we implemented the unit level test environment in the next video we will look at implementing functional coverage implementing the monitor and we might also take a look at randomization